I'm going to present this update of the trial, which I think is known to many of you. It's the phase three trial in advanced and metastatic kidney cancer of nivolumab uh, against uh, everolimus in patients that have received anti-angiogenic anti therapy beforehand. Uh, Bob Motzer is the PI on this study. These are my disclosures. As you all know, nivolumab is a fully humanized IgG anti-PD-1 uh, antibody that specifically prevents the interaction of the ligands PDL1 and PDL2 uh, with the receptor PD-1. Uh, you also, I'm sure, are aware that in the phase one trials, uh, the anti-PD-1 showed uh, considerable activity in renal cell cancer as well as other tumor types such as melanoma and non-small cell lung cancer. Everolimus is also well known to the audience. It's approved uh, both in Europe and in the US for uh, relapsed treatment after antiangiogenic therapy with a doubling of the PFS when compared against placebo uh, in a randomized trial. This study, uh, which I guess is known colloquially as CHECK25, uh, has an interesting entry criteria in that everybody must have tissue available, and it must be fairly fresh tissue or recent tissue uh, before randomization. Um, so that uh, the PD-1, uh, PD-L1 expression uh, can be assessed prior to randomization. This is the schema of the trial. Patients have to progress on previous uh, antiangiogenic therapy or within six months. The randomization is one to one as you see. Arm A is nivolumab given every two weeks. Uh, Everolimus is given at standard dose of 10 milligrams a day. Treatment is until progression or toxicity. The primary endpoint of this study is overall survival. The hazard ratio that we're aiming at is 0.76, which gives us a 32% increase in median overall survival between nivolumab and everolimus. The um, objective is, the primary objective is, as I said, the duration of uh, OS and as well as secondary endpoints of PFS and overall uh, response rate, uh, the duration of uh, the overall response rate, of the overall response is going to be compared uh, in the two groups, the PDL1 uh, expressing and the PDL1 not expressing group, which is why the patients are stratified uh, for PDL1 expression before randomization. Uh, key inclusion criteria are really very standard. The only thing I think that's worth pointing out uh, is that patients can have one or two prior antiangiogenic therapies, but cannot have more than three prior systemic therapies in all. Exclusion criteria, no history uh, of uh, uh, CNS metastases. Prior treatment with uh, PD-1, uh, anti-PD-1, anti-PD-L1, um, anti-CD137 and anti-CD4 antibodies are, are not allowed. Thank you. These are the acknowledgements. <laughs>